guys, what's up? It's Claire here, and out of all the 44 Android open world games on our database, today we're going to be bringing you the top 15 Android open world games of all time. The play score is an average of gamer and critic ratings. Opening up with number 15 is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Whether or not you liked Andrew Garfield's run as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, at the very least, the Android gaming world got a pretty decent open world game from that. While it lets you sling your webs around a miniature Manhattan, it seems like it was far too much for most smartphones. But for four years after its release, and using today's gadget lineup, the game is an impressive enough title for the Spider-Man fans looking for an open world combat. It has a play score of a 7.55. 14 is Ark Survival Evolved. Dedicated to anyone who wants a portable Ark Survival Evolved experience, this Android version is more or less similar to the PC original. And not only is it portable, it's also a free-to-play game, albeit with a run of the mill microtransactions. Roam around the island wilderness and live another day amid prehistoric threats. Running smoothly, at least on some devices, it's marred by its iffy controls and optimizations. It has a play score of a 7.66. At 13th place is Grotopia. No, this is not another Minecraft or Terraria clone. It might be even bigger than the two. You know, at least when it comes to open exploration. While it's not a seamless world to roam around in, Grotopia offers thousands upon thousands of hub worlds for players to explore, decorate, and create. Doubling as an MMO, be warned there might be some issues of griefing and even death. But as a brick-breaking, dog-eat-dog world for creative expression and friend-making, it has a play score of a 7.71. 12th goes to Terraria. It's like Minecraft, but not really, and really it's its own thing. You can quench your wanderlust in this pixelated, side-scrolling, randomly generated wonderland. Just don't wander too far on the east or the west or you'll face a perilous swamp or a giant floating skull. But if you dig down, like literally in the game, you'll find that the exploration possibilities in Terraria is endless. As Hardcore Droid puts it, despite not being a very good platformer, Terraria successfully recreates the appeal of Minecraft with stronger roguelike elements to keep players motivated. It has a play score of a 7.85. Coming in at number 11 is Order and Chaos 2 Redemption. A sequel to Gameloft's MMORPG series, you're up for another round of fantasy action in their living and breathing universe. Journeying with thousands of other players, the mobile MMO is packed with the essentials of PvP and optimized chats for parties to work together against colossal bosses. Although it's a great alternative for the World of Warcraft players on the go, there are some reports of Gameloft abandoning development for the title. As of the game, it's still a functional title, and it has a play score of a 7.93. At number 10 is Goat Simulator. Oh man, this game was a meme and a half back in the day. If for some reason you totally missed out on what Goat Simulator is all about, it's really all in the name. It's a goat freaking simulator. Here you're a goat doing goat things like jumping on a trampoline, destroying birthday parties, becoming prom queen, and becoming the devil goat itself. In the newer game review Silver at the Play Store, opinions are mostly about how people think that this game is so glitchy it's funny in the best way, or it's so glitchy it won't let them play. Currently, it has a play score of a 7.99. At 9th place goes to Raven Sword Shadowlands 3D RPG. Following the events of the Fallen King, Raven Sword continues its tale of medieval fantasy with a dash of prehistoric dino killing. While it's not exactly a state of the art video game with its outdated graphics and hang ups, it does work well for something that costs less than $10. Optimized at least for the smartphones of its time, Raven Sword, that's rife with monsters, weapons, and other RPG tropes, is happy enough to be your cheap mobile Skyrim alternative. It has a play score of a 7. At number 8 is Farming Simulator 18. Okay, when you were a kid and someone asked you what you wanted to be when you grew up and you said you only wanted to be a farmer only to have your dreams crushed by reality, well, pout no longer because you can now live your best farm life dream in Farming Simulator. Livestock? Check. Crops? Check. Farming vehicles? Check, check, check. Pocket Gamer has this to say about the game. It is definitely not for everyone, but Farming Simulator 18 is the absolute best example of a simulator on mobile. And with that, a play score of an 8.04. 
Seventh place goes to Symbol Planes. Mechanical engineers, pilots, and plane enthusiasts get a load of this one. Symbol Planes makes building and designing planes, well, simple. Snap parts together and boom bada bam, you got the plane of your dreams. Test how it flies and when it crashes, and you know it will, enjoy the super realistic physics this game runs on and do it all over again. You can do everything to do with planes in this game, from building to painting to flying to comparing it with other players. Well, isn't that fly? Simple Planes is soaring with a play score of an 8.09. Hey, found a game that you like? If you did, then go on over to our description box. We have all the links of all the games that were featured in this video. And if the game that you like isn't featured on this video, then go on over to our comment section. Rage it out if you must, as long as you're strictly PG about it. And if you want to watch me and the What to Play gang play all our favorite and latest games, then go on over to our new channel. It's called What to Play Live, and it's a gameplay channel. I hope you guys visit it there. All right, go back to the video now. <laughs> At number 6 is GTA Chinatown Wars. It's good to see old portable games making its way to the mobile. One of Rockstar's side projects after the success of GTA 4 prompts them to go back to their roots and embrace the portable market. This 13th game of the series takes you to a top-down open-world adventure set in Liberty City. It still shares the same gameplay mechanics from all the GTA games including stealing cars, shooting stuff, buying stuff, and crime. Except it's on a different camera perspective, reminiscent to its original original titles. It has a play score of an 8.11. Coming in at number 5 is Minecraft Pocket Edition. Oof, there is no denying Microsoft Sandbox Open World is a record-breaking success. Sit in a sprawling world where everything is polygonal in nature, rebuild this empty universe by crafting, mining, brewing, and even enchanting blocks just to make the perfect world to live in. You can even call a friend and let them help you in its multiplayer feature. Just like any other version, this voxel-based game is divided into 5 different modes including survival survival, creative, hardcore, adventure, and spectator. What you do is up to you. It has a play score of an 8.15. Fourth place goes to Don't Starve Pocket Edition. Starvation isn't the only thing that you should worry about in this game. There are super aggressive bees, pigs, hounds, and everything else that will come to hunt you every so often. And of course, Charlie, the night monster, who will snuff your life off if you don't have any light source. Doesn't that sound like so much fun? Android Guys review that pushed this game to have a full play score reads it's pricier than many mobile games on the market, but it offers a full console quality experience that's worth the price of admission. An insanely fun game with a play score of an 8.39. Third on our list is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the most popular GTA game before GTA even exploded into the video game market. From the classic cheat list to the violent killing sprees, stealing cars, and insane modding, San Andreas is a staple of open world wonder. And it's on the Android. It's basically the same game. You can follow the life of CJ as he makes a name for himself in the quaint little city of San Andreas. Drive around the streets, make yourself at home at Grove Street, and befriend gang members in the middle of a grueling gang war. It has a play score of an 8.72. Second place goes to Sorcery 3. Inkle LTD's epic open world narrative adventure is as stunning as ever in this third installment. An adaptation of the best selling game book from Steve Jackson, this entry takes you to a magical world filled with monsters, traps, and magic, all in glorious hand drawn format. With its choose your own adventure playstyle, every single campaign is different and it clearly emphasizes its true RPG elements. Learn new spells, meet five major gods, and brace yourself for a genuine epic quest. It has a play score of an 8.97. And the best Android open world game is none other than Crashlands. After crash landing from a mysterious hostile planet, help your character survive from an extraterrestrial freak show. Do whatever it takes to survive and thrive in this gorgeous sandbox open world filled with alien shenanigans. Crashlands is a work of art, considering it offers a multitude of beautifully drawn designs and animations. Play alone or even with friends in its multiplayer cross-platform mode. Explore a vast wilderness, craft weapons and items, and fight against the dangers of the new world. It has a play score of a 9.10. 
And those were the top 15 Android open world games of all time. If you loved it or you hated it, comment it down below so we will definitely know. And if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to become a certified what to player. That was weird. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.